uh, encounter somebody as we may know of as Doubting Thomas. This is a Michelangelo picture that kind of vivalizes for us that Doubting Thomas believes. Um, with that said, we uh, invite you this, this, this day to come and worship our Heavenly Father and also to be aware of the fact of uh, that God still, even in our midst of our doubts, still strengthens our faith. And so we'll, we'll watch that and we'll hear that and we'll sing about that within our hymns. Just something to highlight for you. Uh, between, the, between the readings and also the gospel lesson, I did not put in the, the, the gospel verse, so the gospel verse will appear on our screen, which is the first verse to O Sons and Daughters of the King, which is also uh, our song for our sermon hymn. So, With that said, let us rise and begin in our opening hymn, He's Risen, He's Risen, and Happy Easter. God's name placed on us with the, over the waters of baptism. So again, we begin our worship by placing his name upon us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ has risen from the dead. God. He has given him dominion over the works of his hand. He has put all things under his feet. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk. And God made him grow up to salvation. salvation. And having taste, the Lord is good. 
Let us confess our sins before God and in the presence of one another. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Please be seated. If you look here on the screen, um, I have the common picture of Jesus. Actually, CPH, I believe, is the author of this picture. One of the interesting things about this picture of Jesus is you'll notice his eyes. I remember once being with a friend of mine in a store, and we were looking at pictures of Jesus, and she had blue eyes and I had brown eyes, and she responded by saying, look, I'm closer to Jesus because he has blue eyes. The picture was of Jesus with blue eyes. But we looked a few pictures over, and there was a picture of Jesus with brown eyes. And then I reminded her, well, look here. Jesus has brown eyes. One of the interesting things is as a young person in confirmation, our pastor took us to a lot of different churches within New York where I grew up. Uh, we lived in the suburbs, but we went into the city that day. And in the Korean Lutheran church there, there is a picture of Jesus. But Jesus doesn't look like an Anglo like you and I. He looked more Asian. And uh, we kind of commented on that, but the community of faith was made up of Korean Americans. One of the interesting things about that is, what does Jesus look like, right? What does he look like? I mean, he probably is more darker skinned, olive skinned of somebody who lives in the Mediterranean, but um, we kind of picture Jesus sometimes maybe as an Anglo-European or maybe a Korean or maybe even somebody with blue eyes. But how do we know who Jesus is if we've not seen him? Consider this for a minute. When a child is born blind and they are blind through their entire life, they still know who their parents are because of the voice and the words that their parents, their mother and their father says to them. And they know and they can distinguish the difference. In the same way for us, we may not know the physical characteristics of Jesus, but we know him because of his word. And he speaks to us through his word as we read it. We consume it, we hear it, we inwardly digest it, as the old liturgy says, and we know who our Savior is. And so with that in mind, we may not be, ha be able to physically see him yet, but we know who he is because of his word. So let us hear that word today. The first reading for today comes from the book of Acts. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were given their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds to what was sold. And they laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from 1 John, the first and part of the second chapter. We hear these words. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked at upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. For the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you 
so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, and if we have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. To we rise and sing together our gospel verse. <laughs> The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again. And Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You, Please be seated. We sing together verses 5 through 9 of O Sons and Daughters of the King. When Thomas first
Let us begin with prayer. We pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day to hear your word. We pray that our faith, even in the midst of our doubts, may be strengthened like that of Thomas. In your name we pray. Amen. Last week we celebrated Easter. It was a time of celebration, an uplifting service. And thank you, we had close to 160 people in church. We heard the story of Jesus rising again and appearing to his loved ones and how the message was for us and for our salvation. I will personally say to you, I find it always a joy to leave Easter, especially as a pastor, because I don't want it to end. Maybe it's a glimpse of what heaven will be like when we're in the presence of Jesus. When I do leave Easter services and even Christmas services, I kind of have what I call a faith high, if that's a right way of saying it. It seems that Easter leaves me with, with a real presence of God's love. And particularly, it's good to see people come. Lent's over. The time of joy is in the church. You know, in the season of Lent, we remove alleluias many times. And in the season of Easter, which is about five weeks, we sing uh, probably about 80 alleluias a service. And we love to say then, in the beginning of our Easter services, Christ is risen and you respond. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. But then when we come back on this second Sunday in Easter of the week, we expect that the hard stuff is over. The death, the resurrection, and even the story of Jesus becomes a little easier. Except when we come to our text in our gospel lesson. The story for this Sunday kind of leaves us a little discouraged. Especially there as Thomas comes into the presence of the other disciples. They begin to tell Jesus, excuse me, they begin to tell Thomas, we've seen Jesus. Jesus appeared to the 11, excuse me, to the 10, and Thomas was not there. Jesus says to them, peace be with you. Even though the doors are locked, Jesus has the ability, as God does, to appear. But Thomas is the one who misses out. For some reason, Thomas arrives late or on a different day, and they say, Thomas, you won't believe what has happened. And then Thomas begins to get that terrible name that we've attributed to him, Doubting Thomas. Thomas proclaims loudly, unless I see for myself and I can touch his wounds, I won't believe. I mean, have you ever wondered how Thomas was feeling? How he felt when his disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. I mean, he just went through the excruciating public humiliation of Jesus. He saw with his own eyes the very death of Jesus. Crucifixion, which is a horrible way of dying, but was a very popular way in which the Romans persecuted people. And now the disciples in a macabre way come to him and say, we have seen the Lord. I mean, were they pranksters? Maybe they were using a terrible way of telling this. Were they playing a joke or were they telling him the truth? Why hadn't Jesus appeared to me, Thomas must have thought. The other ten were here, and yet he did not appear to me. But the next week, there he is, Thomas with the other ten. And there Jesus appears to him. All of a sudden, in the twinkle of an eye, there Jesus is present with them. And he says to Thomas, Do you believe because you see? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. I kind of feel bad for Thomas. Throughout the entire gospel lesson, and even in the entire gospels, he's probably one of the only disciples with what we would call a nickname, the doubting Thomas. You wonder if that was given to him by the other disciples, or was it given to him by tradition within the church? But there it is. He's called the Doubting Thomas. We have a grandfather in our family whose nickname is, was carved on his tombstone. His name is Porky, and he got that because he worked in the train yard, and one night after his crew was real hungry, he went to the dining car and got a big plate of pork chops. And yet, as he was running to, the, to his men and their crew, the train pulled away, and he was left behind with a big 
pan of pork chops, and so they called him Porky after that. That's a nickname that may be a little humorous if you don't know the background to it, but doubting, I mean, doubting is not a name that anyone would like. I would personally be hate to be given a nickname, especially something like the Doubting Scott. But I will admit to you, maybe all of us have been like Thomas at one time or another. I'm not saying that we deny who Jesus is as our Lord and Savior, but there are times in life when we can doubt. My doubts can come in my thoughts, my feelings, especially when I question God. That can happen when life comes in its terrible season. God, do you really care about me? God, do you really hear me? God, is your word true? Would God really love a person like me? You know, we can say the worst things, can't we? I'm, I'm even amazed that our confession today says most grievous sins. I mean, think of the things we've done that can terribly affect our life years later. Is God working for our good? And all of these can be doubts, not like Thomas's so much, but they can be questions that we ask of God. I know that I'm not alone, and I have heard it from conversations with people over the years. Words like, Pastor, I find it hard to trust God in this situation. Does God love me? This is the experience of C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis, the author of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, was also a very deep-thinking Christian. He was an atheist in his early years, but he came to faith because of friends like J.R. Tolkien. J.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, yes, they wrote fiction, but yet they were very deep Christian thinkers. C.S. Lewis, on the death of his wife, wrote these words, Not that I think much in the danger of ceasing to believe in God, the real danger for me is coming to believe such dreadful things about him. The conclusion I dread is not so there is no God, but rather that so this is what God really is like. Deceive yourself no longer. C.S. Lewis is not alone. And I imagine that we all at one time are like that. I know that each of us as Christians have doubts at times, especially in the circumstances of life. I don't know what you're going through now and what you're experiencing, but I imagine that at times doubt can creep into your thoughts. That's why Jesus' words are important for us and why it's important for us to hear the story of Doubting Thomas every year. It may be the reason for this story is to show us that even though Thomas doubted, when Jesus came to him and his words filled Thomas's ears, he experienced the resurrected Lord. You notice how Thomas said, unless I see and can touch the wounds. I mean, imagine a friend telling you that I had surgery and you go, that's nice, but I want to touch the scars and I want to hold the organ that they removed in your, my hands. You may recall that generation or two ago they'd give you your gallbladder or even your tonsils to take home. I remember a kid in school bringing it. For some reason, they did that. The fact is, is that Thomas is really of that same mind. Unless I see it and touch, I will not believe it. And then Jesus appears to him and says, Thomas, touch my wounds. And Thomas then declares, my Lord and my God. Thomas's doubt was overcome by the resurrected Lord's words. Jesus shared with him the very scars in which he bore for Jesus and for you and I, excuse me, for Thomas and for you and I. It was in those wounds then that Thomas was able to declare clearly, my Lord and my God. The disciples were not pranksters. They weren't foolishly leading Thomas astray, but instead they were showing him the resurrected Lord. Now we may not see Jesus physically before us, but we have his word. His word clearly declares to us, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That is us, right? Jesus' scars we one day will see, but his word we hear today. There the risen Lord comes to us and says, I am with you to the very end of the age. 
Jesus appears to Thomas in the locked room and says, peace be with you. Jesus' words speak to us in our doubts when he says, peace be with you. You see, faith is not our doing. It's not that I get up here every Sunday to try to convince you to give it a little bit more. No, faith is a gift by which God gives to us and his word sustains it. Peter writes these words. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You hear that it's God is the one who brings faith to our hearts and he is the one who sustains it. That really is a joyful thing for me as a pastor because I'm not a coach trying to encourage you to get back in the game, but instead I'm reminding you of who your Savior is as a witness. Jesus breathes on his disciples and says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. That word Hebrew, the Hebrew word for peace is really shalom. It means more than just peace in the sense of become, but it means may all things work for your good and may God sustain you in whatever you're going through. May you feel his hands in your life and in, or surrounding you. That's really the, the depth of the word shalom. It also is reflected in Paul's words. Just listen to these. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Thomas may be the one who saw Jesus' scars, but we're the ones who hear his word. And like Thomas, we have faith in that word. In the midst of our doubts, may God's love strengthen and help us overcome our circumstances and allow us to surely say, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. With that said, let us rise and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time in our prayers, we want to pray for those that are listed in our bulletins. We also want to pray for the um, um, Pastor Kerry uh, Veet and Gary Veet. Both of them serve as pastors. Uh, they're part of the LCMC uh, church in our communities. Um, their son has possibly been diagnosed with kidney cancer, um, but they found a tumor. And so she, they've asked, asked um, uh, for us to pray for him. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you on this day when you have opened to us the way of everlasting life. You show us, Lord, that even in our doubts, you strengthen us with your word. As you speak to us into our lives, and in the moments when we wonder, Lord, do you love us? May your word speak clearly to us. We ask this, Lord, in your mercy. 
Father, we thank you for the life of your disciples. From Thomas and the others that heard your word and saw you, to us today who bear witness to your resurrection. Lord, we are clearly aware that in the midst of this world, as this world rages in anger, as nations seem to be at the brink, and as people as well too within their lives do not love their neighbors, we pray, Lord, that our witness of your word would bear into the places where we go. May we show your face to those that do not know you. We pray for the leaders of this nation and for other nations of the world that they may make the choices that, that lead toward peace. We pray, Lord, as well, that you would watch over those that guard our lives from the police and firefighters to those that serve in our national armed forces. Give them strength, timing. May we live lives that are safe and secure. We pray that you would keep dangerous weather from us, that you'd watch over those that work the land, that you would provide for your timing. Lord, we also pray for uh, Gary and Carrie Veet, Pastor Gary and Carrie Veet's son. We ask that you would give him strength as they go through these tests. We pray, Lord, as well, that you'd watch over all of those that are listed in our bulletin who are in need of healing. We know that you are a God who hears our prayers, and we speak to you words that you hear, sometimes in our hearts with only you able to hear, or other times out loud. We even pray, Lord, for things we don't know. As you have spoken, your spirit groans inwardly for things we may not even be able to speak verbally. We ask that you'd guide us in all things. Watch over those in our midst who are in need of healing. Preserve us, strengthen marriages, give guidance to lives that are led astray. We ask all of these things. We pray proudly and boldly the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. At this time, we will receive our offerings. We sing together our hymn verse. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is good right on this day to give thanks to God, the Father for the victory over death and the grave, which he has granted to us through his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, Christ destroyed the power of death for all who believe in him by his glorious resurrection from the dead. All the angels of heaven now sing his praise, the one who has been crowned the victor. All the saints of God who have gone before us now gather around his throne to worship him, adding their voices to those of the angels of God. We gather here today celebrating with all those who are in heaven the victory he has won for us made real as we celebrate and receive the gifts of his body and blood, therefore with angels and all the host of heaven. We lift our voices to praise his holy name. Sing, <coughs> 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And also after supper, he also took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them also, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed also for you for the remission of sins. This do also in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. We sing. You may be seated. We sing the first three verses of our hymn. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take now and drink the true blood of Christ given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in the true faith to life eternal. Depart in peace. Amen. We will now collect the utensils from communion and we will sing verses four and five of our hymn. For you, O resurrected Lord, our founding means divine. of Let us 
bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our sending him. Jesus lives the victory of one. Peace, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You may be seated. On behalf of our congregation, we welcome you. It's good to see some uh, familiar faces back. I know that um, as we go forward, we're kind of uh, looking at some of the things that we're doing in, in regards to communion. Um, there'll be some more things there. We, wanna, we still want to be safe in our, in our, our um, uh, precautions and all of that stuff. But with that said, uh, we encourage people to get the vaccine to to be able to come to worship. Just to let you know as well too, um, we are studying the book of Proverbs. And so if you've ever wondered about the book of Proverbs, we'd invite you to do that. This Wednesday we will, we will also, um, Bible class, we'll be looking at um, uh, the readings that are coming up. So if you want to join us uh, on Wednesday Bible class. 
And then also, too, um, in the next few weeks, um, toward the end of uh, April, beginning of May, we will, we will have, uh, we have five youth that will be confirmed. And so uh, we'll be having confirmation, um, the ceremony of confirmation after um, worship like we did last year, just so that families that are larger um, can gather um, and not, uh, you know, not push us out or anything like that. So you'll, you'll see some names that you're, that you're probably familiar with. Uh, they'll be in the bulletin soon. So if you need anything, please call on us and, um, you know, have a, a great uh, time outside. God's blessed us with some nice weather. So we're blessed to be able to see that before it gets drier. With that said, have a wonderful week. I'll meet you out.